my business seems to take me away from getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what should I do? This is a problem for a lot of good Muslims too. Um, actually, it was a problem for myself also. Um, you know, when you get tied up at work, then even if you take a break to pray, and you make wudu, and you're standing there, and you say, Allahu Akbar, and you start praying, your, your head is still at work. Right? If you're a programmer, and you're writing code, and you left it halfway, and you, made, you started praying, you're finishing the line in, in, your, in your salah. Oh my God, I missed that slash. <laughs> right? I gotta go back. So this is actually a very normal thing. If you're running a business, right, and you left the cash register with a clerk, and you forgot to tell him how to press the button that the thing comes out, in your salah, you're like, oh God, should I, what's going to happen if a customer, that's what's going on in your head. Right? So, uh, you know, mixing work and remembering Allah together, especially salah, is a very, very challenging thing. You know, Allah says, uh, there's a diff distinction in the Qur'an between the believer, al-mu'min, al-mu'minun, right, and al-ladhina amanu. There are two phrases in Arabic that are used in the Qur'an for Muslims. Al-mu'minun, those who truly believe, the true believers. Al-ladhina amanu, those who have come to believe. And it sounds like they're the same thing, believers, those who come to believe, but they're actually very different statements. They're, and, and they're significantly different in how they're used in the Qur'an. Just to make a complex matter simple, الَّذِينَ amanu, which is the common phrase, is verbal. It's a verb. And al-mu'minun is a noun. And the difference between a verb and a noun is a noun is permanent, and a verb is temporary, right? When Allah says الَّذِينَ amanu, He's speaking of those who entered into Islam. They said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and they entered into Islam. When he speaks about al-mu'minun, he's talking about a special breed of the Muslims who have firm conviction and they are actually the most mature, solid people of faith. Not every Muslim is like this. You have to earn that title. Now why am I bringing that up in a question about remembering Allah or having a relationship with Allah? No matter what your business, what your job, what your career, whatever it is, Allah installed a, uh, an automated mechanism, a divine given mechanism, so no one, whether they live in a desert, or they live in, 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 a, in a jungle like New York City, or if they live out in the middle of the woods, doesn't matter where, they will remain connected with Allah through what? Salah, the prayer. Now this, but you can't just pray and think you're connected to Allah. You have to have this special secret ingredient in your prayer, that will keep you connected to Allah. If you don't have this ingredient, your prayer might become shallow and empty. At least you're doing it, but it's missing something. Now what is that secret ingredient? Allah says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The true believers have come to succeed. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ And then the secret ingredient, خَاشِعُونَ The true believers have attained success. Those who have khushur, awe, humility, being overpowered, concentration, all these things in one word, in their prayer. So basically what, you're, what, what we're being asked to do is, I'm busy at work or I'm at home, my kids are playing in the background and now I gotta go make salah. As soon as I say Allahu Akbar, I have entered another dimension. It's like I went through a portal, I'm not even there. I'm giving you like sci-fi examples because I'm sure you guys watch cartoons when you were younger, right? You've entered another dimension. That world doesn't exist for you. Your kids don't exist for you, your wife doesn't exist for you, your work doesn't exist for you. Nothing exists for you. It's just you and Allah, that's it. That's it. We have to enter that state when we enter into salah. Which is why it's recommended that you find a quiet place to pray. And you, actually my personal advice, it's not scholarly, it's just a tip. Is before you start prayer, stand there for a couple of minutes and let everything out of your system. Your, your, just flush your brain. With all the thoughts that are running, just get them out. And then just engage yourself in prayer. And it, when you're going to pray, know what you're reciting. Even if you don't know Arabic, Learn some vocabulary of what you're reciting and listen to talks, lectures, study tafsir of those few ayat that you've memorized so you have a deep connection with at least those ayat. And the small statements we make, Subhana Rabbi al azim Subhana Rabbi al ala right? Sami Allahu liman hamid. These small phrases is not overwhelming vocabulary. Even if you learn one of those a week, you'll be all right. But learn that vocabulary and have a deep connection with that vocabulary. Because salah really is a conversation between you and Allah. So long as your prayer is okay, I don't care if you're at work, or you're at play, or anywhere else. If your prayer is okay, you're connected to Allah. Your prayer is weak, you're disconnected to Allah, even if you're in the masjid. Even if you're in the masjid. If your prayer is distant, and you're not concentrating in your salah, and you're not overwhelmed in the salah, then you're, then you're still not connected to Allah. So it's, it's not your work that's the problem. That's what my answer to the question, and Allah knows best, is it's not work that's the problem, it's concentration in the prayer that's the problem.